evening, folks, and welcome to this week's episode of the Pilot Review Show. I am Captain Blade J52, and I am joined by my merry band of cohorts. We have to my immediate right, everyone's favorite RP hologram, Artie. Hey, guys. Who has finally returned from his My Little Pony convention and after being hunted down by Rainbow Dash clones. I wasn't at... <laughs> no matter what he tried to tell you, I wasn't there. <laughs> we heard Q made all the Rainbow Dashes from the holodeck come to life and knock you down. Yeah, that's... that was a different situation altogether. I won't admit that I was there. <laughs> <laughs> and also we have everyone's favorite yet disturbing dancing corn, Teacher <laughs> Kirby. Hello, how's it going, folks? And now you people out there see what I have to put up with. Now, isn't this the stuff of nightmares? <laughs> what are you talking about? That's beautiful. <laughs> I know, green and hot pink with palm fronds. I mean, who wouldn't love it? I'm expecting a role play application to be put in. You know, oh, yes. a little bit of backstory and everything. Oh my god! <laughs> I think Smirk already did that a while ago. Yep, it's definitely going to be one of those episodes. And we also have our <laughs> resident Nila Deton, who is in the channel with us. He will be joining us very shortly. But we've got some pretty interesting stuff to get through this week for you guys, so let's go ahead and dive into everything. And the very first thing we have is the summer event announcement for the PC. On June the 8th to July 20th, we will have our summer event on Risa, and this year we will be... Going for the Vorgon Roncoden Carrier, probably butchered the name. But a separate dev blog will be published to give us the stats and everything. And we also have the Tiger Striped Rhysian Carcicle, or Caracol, words, the cats. And we also have our floaters and our power boards, a rather fun favorite of everybody. We also have the rash guards, the swimwear. We also have the universal kit module sandstorm generator. And this year all of the old Rycian kit modules are being turned into training manuals for your bridge officers. So that is something cool that they're doing. But um, yes. comments from our panel. Um, well, there's also, you, I don't know if maybe you missed it in your reading, but they are changing the hoverboard race into a biathlon. This exciting all-new race combines two favorite rise activities, hoverboard racing and floater flying. At least that's how I read it, that they're changing the the main race. I could be misinterpreting this. So I did miss that. But it does look quite interesting. It says races will begin twice an hour at 30 minutes past and 50 minutes past, which does sound like the old hoverboard race, which, and this is speculation, that they, which leads me to believe that they are, um, that this is going to be the new hoverboard race. I could be wrong, it could be a separate event, and they still have the old hoverboard race, but I think this is going to be the new thing. I could see what you're talking about, Have a, yeah. doing a loop of uh, the power board, and then as soon as you get back to the finish line, you got to do another loop with the floater or something. I see what you mean. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I will definitely be, you know, learning the course and making a video on how to do it, or at least what you need to do, the basics of what you need to do, the mechanics of it, and uh, yeah. So that's, look for that next week. <laughs> Alrighty then. But moving right along, we have the summer event coming along for the first time on the PS4 and Xbox One. Alright. Uh, 
for this one, since it's on a uh, PS4 and Xbox One, uh, starting June 8th to July 20th, uh, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 guys will be able to go to Ryza, have their usual parties, have the power board races, as well as the have all the uh, floaters and all sorts of stuff. Their uh, ship for that summer event would be the Vorgon Xiphus Heavy Escort, this, uh, our last year uh, summer event ship. And uh, from what I can tell, it's... Uh, not, not much different. It's just adding the uh, Ryzen, uh, the Ryzen summer event to the consoles. So, sweet. I know the Xiphus Heavy Escort was a rather fun ship. That uh, whenever I flew it, I knew it caters very heavily to Tetrion. So if you are a player that favors the Tetrion damage, you'll definitely find that Universal console on the ship to be of use. I personally. I'm not sure if you guys have access to the Tholian web console on there yet. I think they do. You think they do? I think so. Well, anyways, if you guys have access to that, access. I'd like to combo that up with the console from the Xiphus, so you can essentially have two additional uh, tactical consoles, so to speak, for extra Tetrion damage, and you could pull some pretty hefty bullcrap with this particular ship. Not to mention it's a mastery trait uh, when you do uh, beam fire at will, you end up uh, dropping mines all over the place wherever you hit. Indeed. Thoughts from you, Kirby? Um, I actually never used the Vorgon ship from last year. Quite interesting, but I know you're right, it does um, tend to, if you use the console, it does tend to favor uh, Tetrions. I am curious to see how the carrier is going to fall in that from this year. So, indeed, that will be interesting to see. Mm hmm. But um, we will have these blogs for you guys as soon as we hear something about the stats for the new ship. We'll be sure to let you all know, and we'll get that information out to you guys. But moving right along, we have the 15% key sale for our console players. So basically, and that's, this is just for console, not for PC, but from May 30th to June 12th, they're having the 15% off key sale. So grab those keys. They are actually quite nicely priced. It's, um, what is it, 96, I believe, for a single key? 96 cent? Sounds I about believe right. So. And it's, yeah, and it's 900. I, I want to say 925. 956, thank you. For a 10 pack. So. Quite a nice uh, chunk off, and definitely worth it. Absolutely. So, if you're somebody like me that occasionally you think, eh, I'm going to drop 20 bucks on this game just because I enjoy playing it, want to get something, well, now you can get a uh, two 10 packs of keys for this. So definitely a great time to invest in keys. Yes. Any comments from our resident hologram? Uh, the stock a stockpile on those keys. I mean, they always come in handy when there's a lockbox coming around. Absolutely. But moving right along, we have our lockboxes of the past returns. Also for our console players. Now, for those of you that have been around on console and everything, you've been through a few lockboxes already. For you guys, from May the 30th until June the 6th, on Tuesday, at the start of maintenance, you guys will be able to pick up any of the previously retired lock boxes. This includes the Cardassian Dominion lock box, the Kelvin Vaudoir, the Lachi, Taushiar, and the Undiscovered lock box. Everything. So, if you've been looking for a certain item from one of the older lock boxes, then now is definitely the chance to pick them up. And everything. Hopefully you guys get what you're looking for and everything. 
Now this type of promotion, I will say, is what eventually led into the Infinity Lock box for the PC and everything. You guys might get that, hopefully sometime in the near future. That would be a very big convenience for you guys. But, um, yeah. Any comments, guys? Uh, no, I'm happy that they're uh, getting uh, the lockbox as well as with the keys, so that ties in very well. So there yes, you go. it does. Yes, it does. Um, I'm actually hoping that eventually they do get the Infinity Lockbox because I, I do agree with uh, Darkblade there. The Infinity Lockbox, I think, is a bit better than all these, um, than a number of lockboxes separately. Just my opinion. Yeah. But, yeah. From what I can tell, there's a better chance of getting any of the special ships from using the, uh, the uh, the universal what, the big Infinity. lock box that has everything yeah and then uh, just using the individuals since the individuals had the lower account uh, lower count of uh, trying to get any of the special ships or anything like that so yep the good thing about the infinity box for our console players out there when you guys do eventually get it is that like I already saying you do have a better chance at getting things. So if, say, you wanted to go for that Kelvin Timeline Constitution and everything, but your look's not really there, you may drop, say, a Tier 5 ship pack instead, which would grant you one of the older ships. While it's no Kelvin Constitution, it's still... Some of the old Tier 5s are still pretty great ships. So even if you don't get what you're looking for, you're pretty much guaranteed to get something decent at the very least, usually. But we will have this in the notes for you guys and everything, so you can check all of this stuff out. But moving right along, we have our Junior Officer Weekend for the PC. All right. Yes. I yeah. am loving this for my free-to-play account <laughs> right now, because I can not only can I get the um, duty officers that are only available during this time, which is the... Um, Exocomp for the feds and the uh, the special remin that does the same thing as the Exocomp. So this is actually a very good duty officer. If you use batteries, it gives a secondary effect. Um, for example, with weapons batteries, it gives you extra damage, a percentage of extra damage. Um, if you use red matter capacitor, it adds a small amount of power into every subsystem, you know, et cetera, et cetera, that you have to, you can read on what it does for each type of battery. But, um, so it's a very nice little battery. It, you can stack it three times. There are other duty officers that do it, but this one is free. So stop by your um, factions, uh, oh, good gosh, your factions. Academy. Uh, Academy, thank you and talk to the personnel officer there. Not the one you get the weekly assignments from, but like for feds you have to talk to Lieutenant Farrow and then you'll get the mission from him and then go talk to the special guy. For KDF you have to talk to the big Gorn up on the platform in the multi-purpose room on the... Yes, yeah. that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> our resident Neela has finally decided then, to join us. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Join. That I got a phone call, and they didn't want to hang up the phone. Oh, it happens, man. And then uh, I'm, yeah, I'm like, so... I gotta go. And why are you calling me at ten o'clock at night? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so you can pick those guys up for free, and then you'll also notice at your academy there's all these either blue or red dots around that everybody's scrambling up and and scanning them and doing weird things to them. So those are for, you can get these little particles that if you collect them you can turn them in for other DOPs, for other duty officers. So, where was I going? Oh yeah. So if you collect 75 you get a purple duty officer. So I'm running around collecting traces. But um, five traces will get you a common, 
25 traces uncommon, 50 traces rare, 75 traces very rare or purple. Um, the thing to remember, if you collect more than 75, it will take everything in one shot. So you cannot get like a purple duty officer and then a rare. Okay, it takes everything in one shot. So if you run and do, say, 100, you're not going to get a purple and a green. Sorry, I hate to tell you. But, uh, yeah, this is a very nice event. It's a free way to get uh, some really decent officers. You get a random one of the uh, whatever um, faction you choose for your uh, academy trainee that you take with you. So if you take a security, a, be a tactical back, you'll get a, a tactical officer. If you take an engineering, you'll get an engineering officer. If you take a science, you'll get a science officer. I've been doing it on my KDF mostly, so. But, got, yeah, nice oh, way to get some free yeah. duty officers. Yes, two Gornaliciuses. Oh, dear sweet Lord <laughs> Jesus. They spread. But I'm just saying they replicate. They <laughs> multiply. They popped oh, out of the snow. To rise like yet? daisies. <laughs> Pops if oh anyone oh knows that movie. <sighs> <laughs> anyway. So I'm also, not talking about junior officer event. But also, you <laughs> left that comment about the little dots. Way too upwinded. <laughs> and welcome to Pilot Review Show did. After Dark. <laughs> yeah. <Surprise. laughs> so yeah, that's Surprise. um. I'm trying to load back in. Yeah, definitely. This is a good time to go out there and get your duty officers and everything. And yeah, get out there, get them doffs, and do whatever it is. Dolphins do, I guess. But um, I'm not much. Dolphin is as dolphin do does. Doffing. I'm not much of a duty do officer doffing. person. These people are, but yes, just kind I, of I ironic because I can stand to do admiralty or admiralty just to annoy Kirby. Well, I can tell you that if you are a KDF planning on doing the marauding duty officers that give you contraband and prisoners that you can turn in for. Buku dilithium, then you'll need a uh, tactical and a couple engineering. So, this is I, a way I, to get I some really to, nice doffs for those. Yeah, I used to do all 20, 25 of my tunes cycling doffs. Duh. And after three years, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. But I, I have a best friend though that still does that. Not not as many characters, but whew. I don't yeah. know how some people do it. I really don't. But well, I will be honest. It only takes about five minutes on a single character. A single character. Note note that note that people. Yeah, a on a character. single character. Then spread well, that on the average of 25 tunes. 20, 20, yeah. 20, 25 characters at 5 minutes. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. That's why I stopped after 3 years. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I am only doing 5. Basically, what yeah. we're also telling you folks is just how little of lives we apparently seem to have. <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> yes, yeah. At least and when it comes to stone, yeah. that is. And it's all for you people. Yeah, so you people can get some uh, amusement and good laughs at uh, our nerd uh, status. Yep. And we pass on everything we learn. But, anyways, moving right along, we have the War Games cues coming to the console. This would be you, Sir Nela. Yep. No. Uh Basically, getting a 
two war games uh, that we got on PC with uh, a little bit ago. The first one is uh, Binary Circuit. It's a Gauntlet class war game scenario, 5v5. Uh, you will not be fighting the enemy team. You'll just be doing a series of puzzles, get to the end, fight around the bosses, kill the mm -hmm. bosses first. You quote unquote win, choose your marks, and leave. Uh, binary circuit. I think the really only almost difficulty is if you pug it the two barrier because you can have a troll just click the button so you, you can't line the uh, tube up in advance. Second one is Corusol 5v5 Convergence Class Wargame. This one is for space. You'll race in Starship through station. Series of puzzles. Get to the end to take out the enemy's core. If you're fast enough on the puzzles, you won't have to worry about fighting the enemy. Or if the enemy is fast as you guys, you'll be able to fight the uh, enemy and have to deal with taking out the core. So essentially, you can either get a deadlock or just focus on the core or draw attention from the enemy away from your core. So it's up to you on uh, that part. And they will be normal advanced elite versions. Uh, Reward marks, deal R&D materials, uh, level 60, 50 to 60 uh, players of all factions, and that's really about it. Yep. Oh, and also, an Epo never runs so fast as when he has a, a has another Epo to catch up to and outpace. <laughs> and there it, is. there it is. Wise words. I had to say it because it was in the blog. Yeah, definitely. I played uh, the binary circuit a time or two. It is an interesting little cue. Not really something I could see myself doing too often, I would say. Mainly just because it's not really my personal cup of tea. But uh, if you're looking well, for... And quick easy marks that's one to consider and go ahead sir Neela. yeah and the fact that yes we won't have competitive marks in uh, any of the other choice of marks missions when this launches but after a while they will put the competitive war game marks into the choice of mark queues so there's that so I kind of think that's a bad mistake on their part, because no, no. they want people to uh, do these cues, but yet they put competitive marks in these other cues. So me personally, I think that's kind of counterintuitive to what they want to do with this whole competitive war game no. reputation and stuff. <laughs> Leave just... it as is. Don't I get my marks by doing my mins and 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 playing the race on Risa. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> I've only gotten so far with the competitive uh, <laughs> reputation is due to the mirror event. Basically, in a nutshell, <laughs> folks, those two don't really like PvP or even the thought of having to remotely PvP. Oh no, I've had a few good runs. I'm alright so with it's not that. PvP. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, not in the traditional sense. Just, just think if uh, those two were in a WoW in a battleground. Oh yeah, they'd be screwed. I mean, what? <laughs> stealth and run to a corner. And then the guy that can see through stealth freezes you and bends you over and spanks your butt with a frostbolt. Then what do you do? 
Then that's just what happens. I'll wait until respawn. I won't be dead. Anyway, now that uh, I I don't know what to say to that, but moving on, <laughs> we have hey. the energy credit cap adjustments. Now, this was one yes. that came about as a result of this Thursday's patch. Everything Bordicus breaks it down on the forums for us here. The exchange maximum was. 750 million. It is now 1.5 billion. The old energy credit cap for gold players and console players was 1 billion. It is now 2 billion. If you are a silver player and have not purchased the EC credit cap increase, then your credit limit was 10 million, but is now 15 million. The account bank energy credit cap for all players was 500 million but is now 1 billion. Now they've also done some different tweaks to the UI as well as um, correcting some formatting errors. One of the biggest things is they finally gave us commas when listing things and all that different stuff. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah, you wouldn't think that would make too big of a deal but when you're sitting there trying to think, it's like, wait a minute, does this number have this many zeros or this many zeros? And you're doing that several times, it... Not gonna lie, I've listed a few things for prices I didn't want to before, but... Anyways, uh, thoughts from the panel on this? I'm happy. It's an interesting move. Good. Yeah, I'm just happy that there's a lot of money. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I thought you weren't going to speak because of, of the pause. So I do think it's an interesting move. I am um, I am glad to see the increase in the account bank, for one. And I'm really glad to see the increase on the energy credit cap for the free-to-play players. That having only $10 million is a limit. If you, I mean, that's, you know... You, you grind up Zen for two keys, which is relatively easy to do, and boom, you're over your limit. You know. So, uh, yeah, so I'm glad to see that now you can grind for three keys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's my smart ass coming out. But, uh, you mean like yeah, usual? No, I'm glad to see that it's, yes, like usual. So I'm glad to see they've increased that. Um, yeah, two billion. Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk I haven't it? even seen that much EC in my life. I know. Yeah, I know, I'm, right? Yeah, I'm actually okay with uh, those two things. Exchange. I kind of, I the, shake my head. I'm like, what were they thinking? Well, the exchange, I see it because, for example, like the trading channel. There are a number of things for sale on the trading channel, and because they want to sell it for more than what the exchange allows, for more than the seven hundred and fifty million, they would use keys as their currency. So, like the the new smugglers escort, for example, was selling for two hundred keys instead of. 750 million. So if you math that out, multiply 200 by 5, and let me grab my calculator because I'm not going to do that on the fly. But it's a lot. Oh, my. Okay. Basically, in a nutshell, it was about 1.3. Is Actually, it's about a billion. So wow. it's well, definitely when I first saw over. It anyway, I'll, I'll rephrase that. Yeah. Well, and I'm estimating at the five million flat price of keys. So, you know, keys will go up to five point two or down to five to five, even. You know, so they fluctuate. But uh, about a billion at least. So that's definitely over the exchange maximum. So. Keys were used for a long time. Keys have been used as a secondary currency 
in STO. So you have something that's, that you want to price higher than the exchange, you use keys to do the trade. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And this has yep. been going on for a long time. So now that people can hold two billion in their account, in their you know, on their own player, and you can post something for one point five, those smuggler ships are gonna end up showing up on the exchange now. Indeed. So and Why? then keys are not as value are not quite as valuable as that second currency. Yeah, no, I understand that part. I just same like I understand, but at the same time I'm just like, eh. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the dark day that we start trading the lithium instead of EC. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, Which to be honest, I actually kind of almost see them kind. Yeah, yeah I could see it. Yeah. Well, I mean, in a like, way, we already do on the exchange. Yeah, I could see that. For me, I have to admit, I am a bit skeptical of these changes. And my big thing is this. I absolutely think it's a good idea that they raise the credit cap for the free-to-play players and folks that don't have the EC cap because 10 million is very very restrictive in a game like this. I also do agree with them raising the exchange limit at least to keep it in line with what the current cap was and everything because if uh, let's say they had uh, kept the exchange where or the uh, cap for your person at 1 billion Okay, if the exchange limit is 750 million and everything, they should have raised it up. Reason being is to keep it in line with the cap. If somebody could make all of their 1 billion off of one sale in one go, I say more power to them. That's uh, my take as far as that one goes. But the thing that I see is in the short term, we probably will see some prices come down, like that of keys and everything, because there's not going to be as much demand for them, as Teacher Kirby was saying, since they're not going to be that all-important second type of currency. Keys are still going to have value and everything, and there's still going to be demand for keys, as there always is, for lockboxes, but they're not going to be as inflated in price as they were before, at least in the short term. Now the problem that I see happening in the long term is that eventually prices are going to inflate because now you've introduced the possibility for players to hold even more EC. And where there's something like this, you increase the limit, there's always going to be somebody that wants to hit that limit. And if EC farming is somebody's thing, absolutely, I say go for it. You know, Personally, I don't, I'm not really much of a super huge EC farmer. But I foresee them having a problem like what happened with the Dilithium market, unless they put in an EC sync to go with these increases. Because one of the problems, if people remember, not too long before the Phoenix pack, we saw the Zen to Dilithium ratio at about 450 Dilithium per Zen, which was ridiculously high if you were trying to buy things, mm -hmm. and made it almost impossible for free to play players to get anywhere. And that was in part due to an overabundance of dilithium supply causing inflation. So that's one of the reasons they introduced the Phoenix prize pack, to get rid of some of that extra supply and to remove some of the excess from the game. Now it usually stays, I've seen it as high as 320 to around 280 somewhere in there on average and everything. Yeah. So the Phoenix pack keeps it under control. So, without something of that caliber for EC, I see this in the long run just exacerbating the problem of very high prices. Like I say, that's just my personal opinion. You know, anybody out there that may hear this later on, absolutely free to disagree with me and everything, and or free to agree with me either or. Again, just my personal take. Don't take that as, you know, set in stone law or anything. But, so, uh, yeah. I just want to meet the guy who met the, uh, that reached the cap of having all the EC and went, yes, yeah, so I finally got the limit, and then this change came in and went, 
damn it, now I gotta uh, grind some more. <laughs> I know a few people that's uh, hit the one billion limit and gone over on other tunes and stuff, but I think the yeah. most amount of EC I've ever held on a single character was like 900 mil and everything. Yeah, if you're somebody that's good at farming EC, well, they got some more goals to shoot for, I guess. Share. Share. <laughs> Basically, what he's well, saying is pity the pack lid. Pity the peers. To do it, I mean, yeah. let me tell you, the summer event is a huge EC. Summer uh, event, Omega. EC opportunity. Oh, yeah. Pretty oh, much yeah. any of the major events like that are good money makers and everything. But summer yes. event, winter event. Uh, Anything they had the special I'm, items for. I'm not gonna do my own one, but I I just made quite a bit of EC, uh, already from some event stuff. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, and just to annoy Kirby out there, and some of them before the just a few minutes before the show, I managed to score a chemocyte laced weaponry one for 35k when they normally go for about four mil. And wow. then, Damn. right after that, I scored two Chemocyte 2s for 500k a pop when they normally go for 4 mil. Damn. Yep. Now I need to start selling these for more because I, I, I see, have like stockpiled other... of those. Yeah, see, those are other EC making opportunities. Yeah. I, but, I have uh, to admit, I was kind of another... surprised. But yeah. Another thing you can do when they have promotions like this, if you have Zen or can easily grind it when they have promotions like the R&D pack. Buy up a few from the C store. Don't open them. Save them till a couple of months after the event. The price of that particular pack will go up, and then you sell it for a profit, or you sell it for a good amount for like twenty or or thirty mil. But yeah. Anyways. So those are. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so those are some ways to make EC. Yep. Like How to be a perfect Ferengi. Indeed. There's, like I say, there's a lot yep. of different ways to make EC and everything, and I'm sure there's been mixed feelings about this, at least that I've seen. There's been a lot of people that's been for it. A lot of people are just like, eh, I don't think we needed this. So, like I say, whichever side of the fence you fall on and everything, it is something to most definitely voice your feedback to the devs on but um, anyways moving along before we get bogged down any further into our EC making habits and apparently I opened that twice I don't know why we have the 20% <laughs> duty officer sale for PC alright well uh, starting on June 1st and ending on June 5th uh, captains will be able to get a discount on their uh, Delta packs, Federation packs, and Klingon packs for duty officers to replace all those red shirts that you may have lost on those bad missions. Uh, a lot of these are the standard, you know, you get your very rare, you get your rare, you get your uncommon duty officers, but all at a simpler price. So there you go. Yes. Indeed. It's a nice compliment to the Junior Officer Weekend. Agreed. Oh yeah, and especially if you're somebody looking to min max, then the I believe it is the Delta Pack. You get a lot of the officers that can increase your crit chance or crit severity based off of certain effects. So if you're somebody that likes that, you may want to consider picking up a few of the packs and trying your luck. But yeah, that's about what we've got for that. We will have this in the notes for you guys. Definitely, if you're looking to invest in duty officers, now is the time to do it. Then, the next thing we have for our console players is the new episode, Survivor. Yep. So, we just got this uh, new episode called Survivor. We get... Uh, and Priscilla of Rama is back. Which is very nice to see what actually happened to her after the end of... Oh, 
Oh, what was the mission? Yesterday's Enterprise? No, no. Um, in game. Oh, in game. Mm, uh, it's kidnapped by the Iconians. Yeah. No, then this is after. Cutting the cord? No, so at the end after. of the Iconian War. No. Yeah. Oh. The midnight. Okay. Yeah, thank you. The last time we saw yep. That's right, midnight. Yep. Yeah, it, it's actually nice to actually finally find her again and see where and what she's been up to. And then, if you haven't played uh, Temporal Ambassador, I would recommend you play that one first because there will be a tie in. From there to this one, which I personally kind of squeed like a little girl when that tie-in happened. I saw it coming. <laughs> I saw it coming. Like I, I saw it coming my way, but still. It was a plot hole. How else do you fix it? <laughs> okay, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it, since that episode. So, yeah, definitely anyway. uh, go check out that episode. It's always nice to see new content coming in. But um, moving right along, we have the Duelist Regalia set preview. This is one of the ones they have on Facebook. I don't think they had any sound to these particular videos. Nope. nope. But anyway, you can kind of see the Duelist Regalia set that they have and everything, but um, and do excuse the clutter of the interface and everything and all that stuff on Facebook. You can kind of see the Romulan, the Federation, all that good stuff. I think they showed the Klingons too. Yep, there's the Klingons. Also, I've heard you can mix and match even if you're not. If you're on a fed, you can have the Klingon cape. Okay. Wait, you'll, ha you'll have all the uh, different options in the tailor. So you mean I could have a cool f armor on a Federation tune with a cape? I'm excited now. <laughs> that's, what, that, that's what I've heard. I haven't actually t tested it yet, but I've heard substantial rumors uh, and actual facts that uh, that is a thing. Okay, I'm gonna wait until I get tier five on that rep. Yeah, I don't want to be excited and get a letdown. Let's go ahead and show the Duelist Tetrion decompression pistols, and we can, I guess, review it all as a whole. We kind of see what uh, the pistols are capable of there, the different firing modes, one of the research kits, one for the engineers. One for the tactical guys. I think it's... I like that science one. Oh yeah. I thought it replayed for a minute, but... Uh, I was just playing through it twice. I'd say though, that science one... I, when I first saw that, I'm like, I'm, I'm waiting for Davidian to pop out. Or... Uh, a max level Starfleet or Klingon captain. Indeed. But some um, thoughts on the new uh, equipment from the new competitive war game stuff, guys. The pistol is awesome. <laughs> Little Indeed. explosions when you hit someone? Come on! And my game's locked up, <laughs> of course. But also, um,. Just a little fact. If you guys have the transport inhibitor or something like that from the Davidian uh, story arc, if you use that on the ground, you have a chance to either spawn a Davidian, a Fanta Phantasma, no uh, Davidian, a Klingon Captain uh, max level or a Starfleet Captain max level. And if it's 
to the Klingon and you're on a Federation tune, you will have to fight them. And vice versa for uh, a KDF and you're on in a Fed Federation captain spawns. Indeed. Yeah, definitely go out there, check out this new equipment and everything. If you're somebody that's into the PvP stuff, or even if you just think something looks cool, it's something else extra you guys may enjoy. But we will have all this stuff in the notes for you guys to check out once the local recording goes up. But moving along, we have our budget build for this evening. This time and I crashed time again. Oh. And he crashed again. Apparently it's the night of the crashing uh, rice uh, gorn tunes, whatever you want to say. It might have to do with Ryza. I've been getting a lot of reports from others that are starting to move their tunes here that they do keep crashing yep. on Ryza, so... Yeah, Maybe you're... due to the event coming soon. Most yes. likely. Dark times are coming! The end is nigh! <laughs> yeah, definitely let them know if you are seeing stuff like that, guys, because that is a very big deal and something they're going to want to prepare for. But, um, anyways, for our build this evening, we have a mid-range version of our Ranger. This is the second part of our little mini-series for a budget build that we're doing, where we take a specific starship and we scale it up, starting off at a bare-bones budget all the way to eventually a somewhat of a high-end build. Now for this evening, we have the second part, which is the mid-range version of the Ranger. Let's go ahead and pull that up. They've still not fixed the actual photo for the Ranger itself and everything. This is the Tier 5 TOS-themed ship. This is one of the ones that you could get from the Temporal Packs. Now if you remember, last week we did have phasers set on the ship and everything. Now as far as our mid-range budgets go, they assume a maximum EC spending limit of about 30 million EC and enough dilithium to take one item up to epic quality, which apparently I did not, um, yeah, apparently I forgot to do, so. Imagine that it's epic. It. Well, I'll just do this. And please tell me it's gonna, okay, well. It's gonna bug out on me, so yeah, there's that. Well, anyway, as far as what we have for weapons uh, this week, we actually did keep our Quantum Phase set. We have our very rare Quantum Phase Beam Array. This is from, I believe it is uh, the Sunrise Mission, if I remember correctly, is where you get this set. It's a yes. Phaser Beam. Then we also have the Torpedo, which I tried to change to Epic, but for... God only knows why it didn't do it. Let me see if I can do it. Okay, well, for some reason it bugs out whenever I set it to the actual epic photo. Let's see if I can scale it up to epic now. There it goes. Okay, so I finally got it to appear for you guys. But um, as far as the item we did take to epic quality, we always assume when we have a mid-range budget that we have enough to lithium to take a single item up to epic quality. And for this, we chose the Quantum Phase Torpedo to do this with. Now, eventually, we will want to upgrade all of our weapons anyways, but to get a good start, since there's only one torpedo, I figured why not buff up the Quantum Phase? That way we can take more advantage of its various effects. But um, as far as the other forward weapons we have, we have a very rare Pulse Phaser. This is a DMG x 2 ack. This one, I believe, cost around 4 mil. I wrote everything down in the notes for you guys and everything, but so, this is one of our money items. Now, the second one is in... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, it is important to note, because I didn't hear you say it, that we do assume a budget of 30 million EC for that mid-range budget. Pretty sure that I said that, but if not, good reminder. Okay. But yeah, definitely, it's a 30 million EC and enough to lithium to get um, one item to epic. Now, we do assume with the mid-ranges that maybe you've sold a set of keys, maybe you've been saving up for a little bit, you've finally been able to kit your ship out a bit more, and this is some of the results that you have. 
But the final forward weapon is an Agony Phaser. It is an Ack Crit D times 2. So it is a bit out of place since we're primarily focusing on DMG, but it was the cheapest one they had with decent mods and everything, so that's why we used it. This one cost about 8 million PC, so a bit on the heavier side as far as the price goes. As far as our aft weapons, we have four of the advanced fleet phasers. These are a DMG times three crit Ds. Now the fleet phasers are very great weapons. They're very cheap and easy to get a hold of. There are 10,000 fleet credits a pop and 8,500 dilithium. So they're very cheap on the fleet end. And you can pretty much guarantee what mods you're going to get. So very great to go with on a budget if you have uh, the resources. As far as our shields, our engines, our warp core and everything, we stuck with the Soul Defense set. Now the Soul Defense set, if you'll remember, comes from the Midnight Mission. And in my personal opinion, I would rank it as one of the two second best sets in game as far as tanking and whatnot. The Soul Defense set, one of the reasons we use it is for the two set bonus, which essentially grants you the a free Neutronium Armors uh, value worth of resistance just by having two of the items on the ship and the third and potent ability that it has is actually a very nice heal that you could pop not just for yourself but for any nearby allies as well so very potent heal along with good damage resistance pretty much a very great thing to have especially for free now since it doesn't have a warp core in the set we had to source one and the one that we used is the Temporal Phase Overcharged Warp Core. And this is a very great core, in my opinion, to have at pretty much all ends of the spectrum, from bare bones to high end, and everything, if you need a warp core. Now, the reason we use this particular core is because of the capacitor that it has. If you did the Delta Recruitment event, then you know of a little device known as the Temporal Negotiator. And what the Temporal Negotiator did was it cut your bridge officer cooldowns in half for a duration, and this essentially does the same thing in the form of a warp core capacitor. So a very great thing to have. As far as our devices go, I do like to usually consider them to be personal preference, but one device we do like to recommend is the subspace field modulator that comes from the skirmish mission. It gives you a pretty good all-around damage resistance, However, it does debuff you with a minus 400 to protonic damage. Now, more than likely, you're not going to come into contact with an enemy that uses that damage type. However, since more of them have been added recently, we do want people to be aware that as far as regular energy damage, you should be good. But going up against protonic, you're going to want to be careful when you use this. Now, two of the other devices that we have are an exotic particle flood battery and the energy amplifier batteries. These cost about 90k EC for a stack of 20 on the exchange at the moment, so pretty decently cheap and everything that you can use for your budget. As far as our engineering consoles go, we didn't really change too awful much from last week. We still have our Universal Quantum Phase Converter. This is part of our Quantum Phase set along with the Beam and the Torp. It gives a very nice three-piece ability. And this console in and of itself kind of functions as a fourth tactical console in a way. Then the next console we had is the Zero Point, zero point Energy Conduit, if I could words. And this comes from our Tier 1 Romulan Reputation. It gives us a little bit of crit chance, a little bit of drain X, if I'm not mistaken, and is overall a pretty decent console to have, in my opinion. We still have our Trillium D plating from the Ragnarok mission. This is an armor console that we picked up. And what makes this particular console so good is it's slightly less in terms of resistances that it gives you in compared to a Neutronium Armor, but it's essentially a Neutronium Armor and a field uh, capacitor that buffs your shields all in one console. So it gives you resistance and shield capacity, which is always nice to have. Now we did replace our Universal console that came with the ship and used a Conductive RCS Accelerator. 
this one with the shield regen mod because this was one of the cheaper ones on the exchange for about a million EC. Now, the Ranger in and of itself doesn't really per se have to have an RCS console and everything. This was more done for the defensive benefits that the console can grant you, but still something nice to have. As far as our science consoles, we did keep those pretty much the same. We have the assimilated module that comes from Tier 1 Omega Rep. Gives some nice crit chance, nice crit severity, and some other nice buffs. Then we have our restorative particle focuser, Control X EPG. This comes from the Crinum Science Lab. And based off of our heals can proc some exotic damage increases. Then finally we have our phaser relays. These come from, I believe it was the Of Science Importance mission. That's where I got these. Again, pretty much all of this is wrote um, down in the yeah. notes. So Sounds right. Of Science Importance. I think so. Yeah. Anyway, I wrote all this stuff down in the notes, so if I kind of forget something and everything, uh, hopefully you guys can... You can call them out later. Well, she can give me grief later, but hopefully you guys can forgive yeah. me for that. But, um... <laughs> Moving along, we have our skills and everything. This is um, a skill set that I personally use and everything. I tend to go for a balanced approach when it comes to this and everything. We have 12 engineering, 16 science, 18 tactical total. Kind of see we've got a couple of points in the improved hull cap and shield cap and then a point in the regens each. We maxed out our energy weapon training. Put two points into EPS flow. One point in Impulse Expertise. We did pick up our Improved Control X and Drain X. We also have our Advanced Targeting Expertise to offset the Thaw and Cannon Scatter Volley Accuracy Penalties. And we also have the Advanced Defensive Maneuvering as this grants us uh, some extra defensive ability. Then we also maxed out all three of the points in our Hull Plating for Free Resistance. We also have two points in improved shield hardness. And we did max out the weapon amplification and the weapon specialization for uh, some free severity and some free crit chance. Now I believe the... Okay, it's still showing the old values in the builder. Now as of season 13, the weapon specialization will only grant you 4% crit chance, but it is still worth picking up. The weapon amplification was actually doubled to 40%, so this is a pretty good thing to have as well. For the captain tier, we have a point in defensive and offensive subsystem tuning. We have two points in improved exotic particle gens. We also maxed out our long range targeting sensors. And then finally, we have three points in advanced shield pin. Now, I personally prefer the shield pin, whereas Kirby prefers the hull pin to yes, bypass sir. some of the armor. There really is no right or wrong answer as far as to which one to use. It's really a matter of personal preference. You know, do you prefer to bleed through their shields a bit more, or do you want to focus more on bypassing armor? Both has their uses, and either one can be utilized in this instance. Then we also have, finally, in the Admiral, we have a point in warp core potential because free power is always nice and we did pick up the shield absorption because it does negate some critical hits from time to time which is always very nice. For specializations we have pilot as our primary due to, uh, due to the defensive values and also intelligence as our secondary versus something we might normally run. And it tried to bug out on me for a moment. As far as our bridge officer powers, they pretty much stayed the same from last week. For our Ensign Universal, we have our Torpedo Spread 1 for our Quantum Phase Torp. Then for our Lieutenant Commander Tactical, we have our TAC Team 1, TAC Pattern Beta 1, and our Beamfire at Will 3. Then for Ensign Tactical, we also have our Torpedo uh, High Yield 1. Again, something else to modify our Quantum Torp. 
For Commander Engineering, we have Engineering Team 1 for the whole heal and buff uh, or debuff purging. Reverse Shield Polarity 1 to recharge our shields. Emergency Power to Weapons 3 to buff up our damage and get more weapons power. And then finally we have what should be Warp Bubble 3. I don't know why they've not fixed that yet in the planner. And the Warp Bubble is a free ability that you can get. I believe it's from the Broken Circle mission is where I said that was from. Sounds I have, right. I have to look at the notes again before I can tell. <laughs> Everything. I suck with names and locations just in case anybody <laughs> hasn't figured that hey, out yet. You're, you're better than I am. I have to actually go through the mission list and look. I kind of got an idea of what arc it's in, and then I got to look at each mission. So you're yeah. better than I am. Well, that's something, I guess. Yeah. And then finally, for our Lieutenant Commander Science, we have the Science Team 1. This will recharge your shields a little bit, as well as purging certain debuffs, such as a subnucleonic effect that a lot of enemies have started to use now. Then we also have the Hazard Emitters 2, which is a heal over time and purges certain debuffs. And we also finally have our Gravity Well 1. It's still a fairly decent control power and everything, and it's... Uh, especially when paired with some of our other abilities, does pretty nice, I believe. Then finally, for our traits and everything, this is where we spent most of our EC. We have the Accurate Trait to help offset some of the Accuracy Penalty to Faw and to Cannon Scatter Volley. Then we also have the Beam Barrage. This is from the Beam R&D School. We always assume, usually, that you've leveled one, maybe two of the crafting schools up as you've been raising your character. And in this case, one of the ones you chose was for your beams. The other powers we have are Beam Training, again, for more free beam damage. We also have Elusive, which makes you harder to hit and gives more defensive value. Then we also have the Grace Under Fire ability. Now this is the engineering specific uh, ability, mainly because the builder itself defaults to an engineer. If you are not an engineering captain, you'll simply replace the grace under fire with your career specific trait, and that'll be what you run for that slot. The next ability we have, this is one of our money traits that cost around 9 million, I think is what I said, or 9.8, and this is the yeah. ablative shell ability. It's always very nice to have this as a tank, nice little heal over time, and a bit of a damage resistance. Another money trait that we have is the Inspirational Leader, which is still fairly nice, I think, in today's game. Finally, we have the Point Blank Shot from the House Peg mission. And then finally, the Operative for Critical Chance and Severity. As far as our Starship traits, pretty much the same. And everything, once we utilized most of the budget and didn't really have access to any other ships, we're assuming, then we pretty much stuck with what we had, which is the best defense. This is um, another one from the House Peg mission, which grants a healing buff to your attack patterns. Then we also have the improved predictive algorithms from our Intel, which helps to offset that accuracy penalty even more. Then we have the Improved Pedal to the Metal from the Pilot Tree, which is a very nice uh, damage boost to have. Finally, for our Space Reps, we have the Advanced Targeting Systems for free severity, Precision for free crit hit chance, then we have Advanced Engines, because why not, give some flight speed and turn, and then finally our Chrono Capacitor to cool down our bridge officers a little bit quicker. For active reps, we have Anti-Time Entanglement Singularity. Then we have our Biomolecular Shield Generator, which is a nice little thing to have. And if you've ever seen those green balls that people poof up in certain missions, this is probably the ability you're seeing. Then we have Quantum Singularity Manipulation, which boosts your science stats for a time, and also gives you a temporary cloaking effect. Now, myself and Kirby, when we're going in for a big lot of damage, we usually pop our Quantum Singularity first, then we may crack off something like a Gravity Well, and then follow up with something like our Anti-Time Entanglement for a lot more damage than usual. And finally, 
We have our deploy sensor interference platform. This is really more of a defensive thing. And if in a pinch you need something to taunt off of you for a couple of minutes, you can use this ability and hopefully buy yourself a little bit of time. But anyways, that's pretty much what we've got for our build this week and everything. We'll take a look at the notes and everything. Why did I say phase beam array? Make quantum phase torpedo. Correct that in the notes. As far as our total costs go, I did uh, total everything up. For our simulated module and our zero point, you're looking at 15k to lithium a pop. For the restorative particle focuser, you're looking at 5k fleet creds and 2500 dill. For our fleet phasers, these are picked up from the starbase. They are 10,000 fleet credits and 8,500 dilithium a pop. So you're looking at a total of 45,000 fleet credits and a total dilithium cost of 66,500. So that's a total of nine days build time due to dilithium refinement limits. Then as far as our EC spent, we spent a total of 28,980,000 EC. Once everything was said and done, you can see some of the costs of the different items there. What not, but um, yeah, that's pretty much our build for this week. Any comments, questions, thoughts? I approve. <laughs> Artie approves this message. I want to make sure people know when they see the EC spent on all the items don't think that's what you're going to pay for it it could be cheaper it could be more expensive mm -hmm. Indeed, it's a living system so when we do these builds and everything that assumes a lot of EC like this as Needless saying you, know, you may get lucky, and where I paid 9.8 for my ablative shell, you might pay only 8 million. Or uh -huh. you may pay more than that. It kind of depends and everything, so you got to shop around a little bit. And whatnot. This is just a rough ballpark estimate as to what prices were when we were putting the build together. Yeah. And the thing to remember, too, is that... Uh... You know, people say, oh, 30 million, that's so much. That's really not even 10 keys that you've sold. That's, uh, that's six keys. So if you can grind for a 10-pack, you sell off six of them, there's your 30 million. So Indeed. it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, or another thing uh, about the play of shell. Like, you, you could get cheaper, like Chris was saying, or you could get dirt cheap like I did, and got it for, <laughs> uh, 50000 The poor guy. All right, Greg in there. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know why I uh, was looking for a player to show that one time, because I, I had it on that character. You lucked into it, yep. I was just like, huh, okay click yeah definitely keep an eye on the exchange folks and stuff like that because um, and it's not just us that ha this happens to sometimes we'll just be sitting no, there you'll be not. looking for a random item and you'll pull something like the chemocyte manuals I mentioned earlier or in his case a trait though the coup de grace for me was getting a universe class for 500 mil on opening day because somebody listed it on the exchange which was fun for me. Yeah. Can't guarantee it was fun for him, but, you know. Oh, no, it, it definitely was not fun for for him. Yeah, it's like the worst <laughs> feeling, but once you get that feeling of having yeah. a bargain price, come on, you're not going to fight that. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, and I've had a couple times uh... where I uh, bought cheap stuff, and the person e uh, either mails me or PMs me if they're on. It's like, can I have that back? Uh, no. no. <laughs> nope. As I have yeah, been see, told I'm multiple nice. times, I'll keep it for 24 hours, and if they ask for it back, they get it back. But oh, I don't. Yeah, I'm just too nice. 
I've always <laughs> run into the situation that if I did the same thing, no one she does has it back. A so just, yeah. Conscience? Who? What? Well, when it comes to stuff like that, I have no conscience. Everything in a video and games like this, video games, everything. You just don't like people. <laughs> if you're that stupid to put something up that uh, that cheap. Everybody's got fat fingers. It, it happens. happens. I wouldn't say stupid. I would say more so if you're. I would call it forgetful more than I would anything, or you're not paying attention. Or you've been posting like the same item a, a couple times that day, and you're just like, uh, yeah. let's finish this. I, yeah, I've, I've had that it. happen too many times. I'll admit, and everything, I've been on both sides of the equation. I've listed stuff for a lot cheaper than I wanted to, and then when I think about it, it's like, oh crap, well, somebody's already bought it. It's like, well, that sucks. And then I've been on the receiving end, too, where I've been the one to buy the cheap item, so, yeah. But for me, I figure, you know, they listed it on there, I bought it fair and square, and I don't see why I should have to. That may be a douche move, might be a jerk thing. But, that's just me personally. But yeah, anyways folks, as far as the budget builds go, definitely tune in next week. We're going to take this to the higher end of the spectrum and try to see what we can do for you guys on that front. But, um, if you have any requests for a budget build you'd like to see us do, you know, feel free to submit it to us and everything. We'll see what we can do for you. Let us know what kind of a ship you're wanting to use, you know, what faction, career, all that good stuff, especially what type of a budget you have, and we'll see what we can put together for you. But as far as the Bugs Corner goes this week, one or two little interesting things that um, I do have for you guys. This one is one that was actually reported by Teacher Kirby not too long ago. Mm-hmm is the installation 18 doors slamming shut and not letting folks uh, back into the final room where you capture the Alachi beta. Oh. Now, yep. this one, it was my understanding, was patched out a while back, and if this is coming back, they're definitely going to want to know about that. So if you are somebody that has played through the Nimbus missions recently and you've come to this issue in installation 18, Definitely be sure to file a report, let them know, feel free to let one of these goofballs know, they'll get it to me, I'll file the report for you, or you can post something up on the forums and everything, and we can hopefully get that to the devs that way. Maybe the Alachi Beta just is, is just tired of being captured. Yeah, I could see that and blowing himself up, I guess. <laughs> but... Uh... Another good one yeah. is the hazard emitters no longer tracking the person you use it on as far as the graphic goes. So that is a another bit of a cosmetic thing that um, was reported to me. I believe that was actually you that turned that one into me, Artie. Yep. So yeah, that's uh, a couple of little tiny bugs I can mention this week. I've got some more behind-the-scenes stuff that I'm usually always working on. Like I say... There's um, some bugs I'd like to tell you guys about, but until they actually get patched, I can't really do it due to the nature of the bugs. But um, rest assured, we are doing everything we can to find this stuff for the devs, and they are doing what they can to patch things for you guys. I know they don't like bugs any more than we do. They like to squash them as fast as they can. So please be patient with them as they do so. Coding can be a real pain in the rear end, and one little dot or zero out of place can crash the entire code. But yeah. Anyways, that's what we've got for the bugs this week and everything. Coming up on our next and next to last uh, segment of the evening, we have Teacher's Corner. What have you got for us this week, yes. Teacher? Yes. So, Teacher's Corner, a... Uh... A viewer actually asked a question in response to one of my videos and it was crafting for fun and profit I do believe and uh, anyway the question was yeah but where do I get the upgrades so it's talking about upgrading um, the weapons once you get one that you like so I was like hmm okay 
So this week's Teacher Corner is where do I get those pesky upgrades? And uh, I go over most if not all of the locations where you can get various upgrades throughout the game. So there you go. And I think I got them all. I may have forgotten one or two. I, I did double check before I uh, before I did the video, but I may have missed one. But anyway, so comments, thoughts. I I, I really like this mostly because uh, sometimes it's just like I'm running around all over the place and I always forget where the upgrades are. Just out of the blue, just blanks out of my mind because I'm just maybe I'm doing too many duty officer missions or admiralty missions or something, and then I'm just like, oh no, upgrades. Uh. Where and this video is definitely <laughs> going to be helpful because I it just happens too many times that that just I need the upgrade that I don't know where they're at. Especially those specific yep. uh, get a whole lot of uh, points out of it. Oh, I know. Indeed. Yeah, definitely very helpful, especially if you are looking to upgrade equipment, especially you know involving some of our budget builds, such as taking that torpedo to epic and everything. But um, we'll definitely have a link to this video for you guys. Everything, if you're looking to upgrade and you're not really sure where to go, then definitely give Teacher's Video a watch. But coming up on our final segment of the evening, we have the RP Corner with Artie. And what have you got for us, dude? Alright, well, this was, uh, was asked to me as a joke, but I kind of took it seriously. I was like, let's see what we can do with this. The uh, prompt was, Safest jobs as an RPer. Uh, this may sound a little confusing, but with most uh, RPers, you're like maybe you're an officer in Starfleet, a warrior in the Klingon Empire, a scientist that's with the uh, Romulan Republic, or something. And they're just like, well, all these guys go off to battle and uh, risk their lives basically every second of the day. What if I want just you know live a simple life and just not worry about any of this stuff? Well. The safest jobs that I've more or less figured out just watching different shows and uh, more or less guessing from all the other RPers that I've run into. Uh, this is what what I got. Simple enough, civilian. All right. Any civilian is safer than uh, most people that go on ambitious adventures on those pesky starships that could easily have a warp core breach or break a window and you're stuck down to space. I mean, <laughs> who, who wants to do any of that? Just stay home. Uh, go to your uh, nine to five job at the coffee shop and never have to worry about it. Uh, you see Starfleet Academy across the water from San Fr in San Francisco. You don't have to worry about any of that. Well, but then it again, it is important to note, though, Guinan was a civilian. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, this he did what... <laughs> say safer, not necessarily completely <laughs> safe. Yeah, th exactly. sadly, there is no. This is where it became more of a trick question uh, when yes. I was given this, because there is no real safe thing as an RPR. Because if you were playing it safe as an RPR, you might as well be an NPC and never have any dialogue. I know, right? Because nothing's interesting when it's safe anymore. I mean, have you ever seen one of these missions do something safe in a while? We took the dipl diplomacy stuff out, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> to go on uh, civilian. Have you seen uh, Klingon farmers? Those guys ain't safe. Exactly. Klingon farmers. So basically what he's saying is it turned into phasers online. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but there was one job that was actually in Starfleet and I don't know if the Romulans or the Klingons may have their their own version of this, but it's basically a Starfleet Diagnostic uh, Officer. Uh, you see this in an episode in Voyager. In one of the deep decks of uh, Voyager, you see this one officer just sitting oh, there around yeah, computers, yeah. just doing nothing, wanting to sit behind his desk, not have to deal with anyone. Technically on the starship, that's the safest job you have. Only because you see things pop up on screens, and that's it. You just look at them. You just you're just monitoring. You don't really go anything else. If someone calls you, that's only because you may have tripped over a power line or something. I mean, 
There's literally nothing to do down there. Safe. The only uh, reason why it's not entirely the 100% safe route is because you're still on a starship. It may, it that bottom part so that you're at may go ex up. exactly. Someone may go, hey, let's shoot the underbelly of that thing. That doesn't seem protected, and blow out your office. I mean, whew. <laughs> Or blow up, or blow up your quarters, because they probably keep, you know, keep the Starfleet Diagnostic uh, Analyzer uh, quarters right next to the office. Exactly. And who wants to, you know, sleep on a bed that's open to vacuum? That just sucks. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. to, uh, but uh, to prove the point that uh, I explained to my friend that gave me this prompt, uh, it really is just a trick question because, for one. Being an RPer, if you're just playing it safe, then you're not really going to get far. Only because y you look at it and you're like, "All right, well, I'm just say I'm just a simple freighter captain. I'm just going to go from A to B, and hopefully, if there's a pirate come uh, comes by, I'm just going to just avoid it altogether. And I'm sorry if my shipment gets late, but I'm just not going to get into any fight. I'm going to play it completely safe, not have any problems. There's no story behind that." You play it too safe, then no one, everyone's going to be looking at you going, oh, you're just a freighter captain, nothing special. Uh. But if you were that one freighter captain that goes, yeah, I looked at those pirates, they came after me, I shot them. Those pirates never messed with me again. Everyone's going to look at you as the, guy, the, the freighter captain that shot pirates. Wow, that guy's dangerous. And then, you know, as you can see in many times in, like, TNG, Deep Space Nine, especially Deep Space Nine, civilians were always in danger. Especially, like, as reference to uh, Deep Space Nine, the brain attack on Earth. Yeah, you're working that five, uh, that 9 to 5 job at the cafe across from Starfleet headquarters, but suddenly a brain ship just comes into low orbit and blows a torpedo through your coffee shop. That sucks. <laughs> it's nothing safe in Star Trek. Just Let's just get that clear, right? So play, so play it dangerous and you'll be fine. Everyone loves a, a little dangerous guy every, uh, every now and then to, uh, to mess with. Women love dangerous men, I'm telling you. You know, you'll get chicks. There, there you, you go. go. All the ways we could turn that into something into an After Dark episode. <laughs> it happens, it happens. Hey, you know, it's the last segment of the show. What can I say? <laughs> just couldn't hold it in. It's the darkest of the episode. But that's basically it. Uh, from what I can tell, they're wasn't really a 100% safe job because there's always a threat around the corner dealing with either a disease or an angry an angry alien race that wants your demise, you know, in a fiery, uh, firing, burning planet. There's always something. And even if you're just a civilian, you may not have, to, you may be safer, but that problem's going to come to you and you don't have a phaser on hand because you're a civilian. I don't know. Guinan had that big weapon that she, she was on a off. starship. This is setting one. Anyone want to see setting two? I kind of want to see yeah. setting three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he would. I don't know. I want to see setting one and a half. But anyway. Anyway. One and a half. One and one eighth. Yeah. <laughs> Are we seriously going to get fractional about this stuff? Okay. Anyway. I can go. I can go decimal point. <laughs> all could. right, all right, all right. But yeah, there's nothing else uh, really to that. No, not really any safe jobs. P live it, uh, play dangerous, dangerously out there when you're trying to RP. Just not too dangerously, you know what I mean? Safe, but not too safe. If that makes sense. Yes. Somewhat. Well, there you go. But yeah, sounds pretty good and everything. But. Um... Anyways, folks, we'll have all this stuff for you guys in the notes once uh, everything gets uploaded. So you can check out some of these different blogs and everything uh, for yourselves. Maybe kind of plan a little bit. Maybe you want to invest in something. Or you're just looking forward to new content, whatever it is. But also a shout out to our friends over at the Temporal Armada. Go check out their radio program that they do. And uh, thanks to those guys for being kind enough to sponsor us. Also, Pilot Review is still planning on going out to Las Vegas this year for the STLV convention. We do have a GoFundMe if you'd like to help support us in that area and everything. This helps cover some of the expenses 
everything as far as the electricity as well as the internet and some of the general cost for actually going out to the convention and everything every little bit helps even if it's just a dollar or spreading the word around we are grateful for any and all support that uh, you guys are willing to give us because without you people out there we wouldn't have a show but uh, if you'd also like us to help improve your piloting and help you improve your DPS or perhaps your tanking or psi skills then feel free to submit a video to us on uh, on YouTube or however you can get it to us and everything and uh, we will go over your piloting with you and hopefully help you improve and everything but uh, as always folks this is the pilot review show and we're signing off Bye. see ya Alonzi.